Andrew Weiler, Video Production 101. Hello, my name is Andrew Weiler, and I'm an aspiring communication major with the emphasis in film. Formerly, I've been a student leader for Dr. Tara Perry, where I am currently working on a documentary film, where I filmed lectures and created an introductory video for communication courses. Today, we're gonna to cover a couple of things. Video equipment used on your video projects, shooting techniques, editing, and some of the copyright laws that you need to be aware of when publishing your video to the internet. To begin, we're gonna start with the camera. Now the camera can be used in different ways to convey different meanings. Here's a few techniques that you can use. The wide shot is commonly used to establish where our audience is being taken. It is objective and shows everything within the scene. Characters, objects, buildings, etc. Here's an example. A medium shot is much closer than a wide shot. It takes a focus away from what's around you and focuses on your subject or object. It's what we call subjectivity. It focuses more on the perspective of the character in front of the camera. Here's an example. Now the close-up, obviously, is much closer than a wide and medium shot. It's the most subjective camera angle you can get. It's personal and it shows a lot of emotion. Here's another example. Another important piece of equipment is your sound equipment. There's two ways that you can record sound. One through your microphone built into the camera and another being an external microphone which you attach onto the camera. The internal microphone is something that we use when we're just recording what's ever in front of the camera. No accessories, just point and shoot and whatever you're recording, your camera picks up. Plain and simple. The external microphone is an accessory that you plug into your camera and basically it's used when you're you know you're sitting down you've got a studio set up or you're planted you're one spot and you want to pick up audio that's directly in front of you pretty directional doesn't pick up all the sound that's going on around here it's right here right now now it's easy with the internal mic to just point and shoot the external one you need to be careful because when you add an accessory onto your camera you need to make sure that the configuration settings are right. If you have a microphone plugged in, it may not pick up the audio if your camera is not designated to use that specific mic. So, you know, refer to your manual or ATUS and make sure they let you know you're using your external mic in the right way. So now that we understand how to use the camera, I'm gonna to explain to you how we're gonna use the lights. The most common use of lights is in the three light setup where you have a key light positioned 45 degrees from your subject that gives most of the lighting. Then you have your filler light, which is another 45 degrees on the opposite side that fill in the darker spots, but not as hard as the key light. Then thirdly, we have the backlight, which gives that different dimension between you and your foreground and you know, bring, brings your character closer to the camera, closer to the audience. Aside from studio lighting and the three light setup, you can also use the sun's light. The sun's light is hard to control, so what I suggest is re checking out a reflector, a light reflector, that you can take when you're on the move with your camera. You're able to control the light at different times of the day to make sure your subject or object is clearly lit. For more information on the intensity of your lights and what kind of lights you can use, go to ATUS Classroom Services and they'll let you know what your options are and how to use them. So now you've shot your video, recorded your audio, and lit all your subjects nicely. What's next? Well, the most important part of filmmaking is next, and that's editing. 
Editing is when you compile all your information and data to make one kick-ass video. Here's a couple of your options here on campus of how to edit. Your videos will be used in the classroom for educational purposes. However, outside the classroom, in the public domain such as YouTube and other internet sources, you're going to need to be aware of some of the copyright laws. If you're going to use another person's piece of work, you need to get permission and also cite that piece of work. For more information about copyright laws, here's some sources. I hope that you've come away with enough information to complete your own video. Getting to know your cameras, your lights, and your audio equipment just makes the project all the more fun because knowing what you're doing is, is going to make everything a lot easier and more enjoyable. Here's an example of how all the aspects of filmmaking come together for a completed project.